Hello, gentle viewers. This is Av Guardian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 23 with the Colorado Rockies. Um, for the very first time, we'll actually get to play a whole fucking season of this on camera. Um, and hopefully things don't break again. Hopefully. Anyway, uh, in today's episode, um, last episode we actually won the World Series. Um, way, way, way ahead of schedule. I definitely did not expect it, but I welcome it. And I hope that we can continue to build on our success. So, I talked about this a little bit last video. I'm not really going to dig too deeply into it, but we are fortunate to have one of the most deep and balanced lineups in the majors. And I'm absolutely positive that no small part of that is, of course, the fantastic ability of Coors Field. <clears throat> but nonetheless, here we are. Um, we have about 14 million to spend and we've already offered a new contract to Derek Lee and uh, guys I love the idea of Ramon Martinez he's gonna get some Cy Young consideration I bet but I'm not gonna pay top dollar for a player that I don't know if I can trust at this age. Um, arbitration settled there. Daniel Cortez can take a flying leap. I wouldn't mind bringing back Marvin Bernard, who did a whole lot of really good work in a really short time. Again, though, he wants to get paid like an everyday starter, and I'm not going to pay that. I'm definitely not going to give him a six-year deal. Um, there's other value to be had, and that's what I'm going to focus on. Banksy here wants, uh, there we go. That was fast. <clears throat> there we go. Um, by the way, to the people who commented on the Friday video, I realized what happened. Um, you might've lost a little bit of audio because my microphone mute button got stuck. Um, I think it was stuck off and I didn't realize it right away. So that's what happened there. Um, like when I just cleared my throat right now and I just realized, oh crap, I didn't hit the mute button because uh, it's stuck again. So I probably need a new microphone, but I don't want to go into that right now. Uh, but maybe it's about time. I've had this microphone a long time. Excellent. Good news, everyone. I do need a rookie league hitting coach, though. Can I get Joe Millette, please? I love getting young coaches and letting them develop, so let's give it a try. They say Denver Bayhawks. There's no bays around Denver. Boom. I have a feeling this, this contract is going to pay super, is going to look super smart in a couple of years. I'm just saying. Um... Excellent news. All the people signing. And a gold glove for Austin Kearns. Well, that's pretty damn awesome. Uh, no reliever of the year. That's, that's okay. You can't win them all. Silver Slugger for Austin. Our entire outfield plus Carlos Guillen is pretty wild. I got manager of the year again because of course I did. How close did Austin Kearns come to winning MVP? I'm curious. Adrian Beltre won. Yeah, you know what? That's a pretty fucking incredible season. I'm I'm not mad. Like fair play. Um, I'm a little concerned with why Aramis Ramirez got more votes than Austin Kearns. Um, I don't get that, but... I personally would have probably put Kearns second, but I kind of get why people wouldn't. But in terms of pure offense, who's the best player in the major leagues? And it's not particularly close, so... 
Come on, weirdos. Do as you're told. Anyway. Who's coming in the Hall of Fame? Who do we got here? Oh, come on, buddy. You, you gotta get over the hump here. Harold Baines, absolutely not. This is a protest vote by me, because I don't think he belongs in the real Hall of Fame either. Um, so I'm going to give a big fat no to that. I will vote yes to Roger Clemens, of course. Uh, even in this timeline, where he's merely fantastic and said the best starting pitcher of the modern era, uh, I think he still deserves it. Leon Durham, not so much. I'll keep I'll keep stumping for Gary Gaetti. Uh, I think he deserves it. I'll vote for Bobby Gritch one last time. I never saw Bobby Gritch play. Uh, by the time he retired in real life, I wasn't really watching. I hadn't really started watching baseball regularly. But I've read so many great books and stories that talk about him and his abilities and how he's been underappreciated. And I want to give the man some love. In a virtual sense. Uh, yes to Oral Hirschheiser, although I think Roger Clemens is going to lap him. I think Clemens makes it on the first ballot. He ought to, anyway. Uh, I'll vote for Chet Lemon. I see no reason not to give him some love. Um... A whole lot of average. Then Brett Saberhagen, arguably even better than Roger Clemens in this timeline, so I'm sure they'll both make it. Some love for Ozzie Smith and Mike Schmidt. Guys, Chris Fire needs to get in too. Like, he very clearly deserves it. Uh, equally, Alan Trammell. And I think I'll call it good there. That's a nice, busy ballot. Uh, honestly, I think the two pitchers had the best chance to make it in, but I would like to see Buddy Bell, Alan Trammell, and even Chris Spire make it. Like, it wants to be a big Hall of Fame class. There's every reason to have it. All right, friends. Free agents file tomorrow. Let's see who is available to take us to the next level. So what's our most immediate need? Well, we're down to only three starting pitchers. So we definitely want at least two. I would love to get a top tier starting pitcher, uh, but I will settle for ones that are not quite as excellent. So Esteban Loaiza is very clearly, without question, the best starting pitcher in this market. No debate, he is the best. Two things give me pause. This gives me very big pause. And this gives me slightly bigger pause. I'm really concerned about overpaying for a starting pitcher who doesn't throw that hard in a stadium like ours. So as much as I would love to get deep in on this, I, I don't think it's an appropriate use of my money. Let's look at the starting pitchers we do have and see who might be a better fit. We have Jarrett Wright. Now, Jarrett Wright is an okay pitcher, I suppose. But $8 million seems like a lot of money for him when I don't have a lot of faith that he has a big career ahead of him. I mean, when you can get Milwaukee Brewer great Glendon Rush, you have to do it, right? Um, or you don't, because, yeah. So, I really have two options here. One is just dumpster dive. 
pick up two or three younger starters and see where it takes us. I could try to trade, or we just push in all of our chips and try to grab Loiza. That last one is a non-starter. I'm not going to sign Loiza, not at the prices he's looking for. I'm also going to categorically eliminate both Ramon Martinez and Jarrett Wright, because ideally I want two starters, which means the most I want to pay for any one starter is probably around $5 million. So let's talk about Jim Abbott. If Jim Abbott wanted, say, $2 million, I would strongly consider this. But his only move is ground ball. That's his only skill. And being a rub around ground baller is a better recipe for success than many I've heard of. But I need something with a bit more pop. Sean Estes has issues throwing strikes. That's a terrible recipe for Coors Field. Dave Fleming has no talent whatsoever. Why is he even close to being this expensive? Are we that, that desperate for starting pitching that a Dave Fleming is earning $7 million a year? Glendon Rush has okay movement and stuff. He's a curveball first guy, which is always intriguing. Glendon Rush is a solid maybe. Even though his movement isn't great, he's on the younger side and he's talented enough that I think he could do decent things. So I think Glendon Rush is my first offer this offseason. Um... I kind of think this is somewhat smart. I wonder if I could get a team option snuck in there. Yeah, I will make this offer. This is unreasonably okay youngish pitcher. Should at the very least give us plenty of quality innings. And I'm okay with that. Brett Tomko is just kind of there. Same thing with Guzman, Traxel. We've all heard these names before. Corey Lytle is cheap. That's his one, like, big advantage, I guess, is that he's super cheap. Chad OJ is going to have very serious issues with movement. Jason Bray. Alex Fernandez, maybe? Like, his value is that he's cheap. And he's got a decent pitch mix. I don't know, though. I almost think we're better off waiting for the draft and seeing if we can not grab a medium to decent starting pitcher then. Because I want someone who does lots of strikeouts. I think that's the first and most important... Well, actually, I thought the most important thing. The most important thing is keeping the ball down. Um, so movement is something I'm going to value a bit more than other teams. Um... But I don't want movement without, say, control. And Tim Scott doesn't have the stamina. Like Pat Rapp, I guess? I mean, Pat Rapp cost me literally no money, so I'm willing to, to give him a chance there. I wish Loiza wasn't so expensive. I truly wish I weren't paying $12 million if I even offered on him. Uh, I'm not saying he's not worth it. I'm saying I can't afford it based on the team as it's currently constructed.
Oh yeah, Pat Rapp. World Championship guaranteed. Boy, I wish I could have Scott Casimir or Zach Reinke, and I doubt either one of them will be where I pick. OSA thinks we end up with Jose Lopez. I cannot tell you how stupid a decision that would be. I'm not saying Jose Lopez is a bad player. I'm not even saying he wouldn't be an okay choice. But what I am saying is that if they're starting pitching of any caliber on the board at that point, I have to take it. I could reunite the fates and reunite Jeff Francis with Colorado. I could go for Joe Blanton or Ian Snell or Chris Young. This is the really big Chris Young, right? The one who's like six foot seven. Yeah, this guy. Each and every one of them is a much better choice for this team in its current configuration than Jose Lopez. So we're gonna see who's still around when I get to, when I get to draft. I'm I have a very there's a very high probability by the way that none of them are left, and I'm basically stuck with something unimpressive. Hey, I said Chris Young. I said his name. He's got big strikeouts, good control, okay movement. Fastball slider change up. I think I have to. I think this is the no braineriest no brainer in the history of no brainers. Uh, it's got to be him. I will take Fernando Cabrera. And then it's all like garbage at that point. Yikes. I'll take good old Lenford Donardo and Denny Bautista and then I'll just end the draft at that point. I imagine any starting pitcher being like, congratulations you went in the first round. They're going to Colorado, and their faces just, like, melt. Like the, the fucking Nazi from Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's like, why did it have to be Colorado? I do want one more swingman for the bullpen, um, but I'm going to wait until the rule past the Rule 5 passes, because that could be a really good source of a mediocre starting pitcher to just... Fill a gap. You know, I totally forgot we drafted Chris Capuano last year. I just didn't remember him at all. He could possibly do a thing. <clears throat> um... Wow, Jelani Boone seems real shitty. Like, he's a pretty good outfielder, and I guess he's, like, people like him. Josh Robinson, no. What do I need? Oh, God, I need a lot. I need an infielder. And probably one outfielder. Oh, literally Josh Robinson is already on my team. Oh my gosh. I mean, I've got people I can call up like Calvin Pickering and Rafael Ramirez. Are there any intriguing infieldy boys? There's Alex Rivera, who's a pretty good third baseman shortstop. Oh, 
the Rafael Mendoza. Wow. No, that's Mario Mendoza. That's who the Mendoza line was named after. Hey, for a glove only utility infielder, it could do a lot worse than Tony Garcia. Literally none of you can hit. Like, not even a tiny bit. What a weird skill set. What an absolutely bizarre skill set. Like, I think it comes down to Mike Ordonez, which isn't great because Mike Ordonez doesn't have the arm to play his short. There's also Jacob Martin, but he has even an even weaker arm. I think we'll take Garcia. Um, Garcia's a really good defender, and that makes him valuable to me. Uh, who is the best overall hitter in the Rule 5 draft? It's Dwayne Wise, and no. I mean... Pablo Arroyo has some interesting traits. He's a very eclectic group. I love that gap power and play discipline, but he's just knocking it for contact enough to make the rest of this skill set work. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I don't want any filter. I just want the best hitter. Like, I don't even care where he plays. I just want someone who's a good, reliable hitter. Uh, Alex Ramirez. Now you intrigue me, Mr. Ramirez. You're an okay corner outfielder. You've got a reasonably good bat. I don't see a real downside here. I don't see a real downside. I'm going to go ahead and take him. I'm going to draft me Alex Ramirez, and we'll see if we can turn him into some sort of megastar. And I think that's fine. Um, the only other player I might consider is Ron Coomer. I don't think he's a great fit, though. So I'm just going to go ahead and end the, the draft. And we get pitching superstar Glendon Rush. So the opening day rotation is certainly going to be, without hesitation, like I'm not even going to delay calling him up, it's going to be Chris Young, Kurt Schilling, Glendon Rush, Bartolo Colon, and Chris Carpenter. And for an early 2000s rotation, I can think of a lot worse choices. We've got a nice mixture of youth and experience, and we've got a couple of other men available if we need that. So I feel okay about that. What I feel less okay about is... Okay, I've got 12 position players. I want to do 13. So what am I missing? I probably need one more bat. Maybe that bat is Calvin Pickering. Um, I would like somebody else who can be a useful infielder, though. That would be nice. What do we got left in free agency? I sound so much time looking at pitchers. I didn't even think about looking at the hitters. 
what do we got? I mean, you know who Brian Hunter reminds me of? Marvin Bernard. But the thing is, I don't need a player like that. I need someone who can play as a reserve at a few different positions. There is Tim Salmon. Um, there's definite value in getting Tim Salmon, except for the fact that Tim Salmon is going to want to play every day. And that is not what this job is. What you're being asked to do is be a very useful fourth outfielder. Um, I'm not going to bring back Kenny Lofton. Again, I don't want to get stuck with people. Brian Jordan seems like a pretty good fit. Um, he's got good uh, defensive chops. He's a reasonably good hitter. I think he'll look excellent in Colorado. I've already had Ruben Sierra. I don't know about Doug Glanville. Bubba Trammell is another possibility, although he's only bat, and I want someone who's got at least a little bit of glove to him. Um, I think I'm going to pick Brian Jordan. Overall, I like his defensive capabilities better. And it still gives me the flexibility to move people around as I need to. Uh, I'll give you a no trade clause. I don't mind. Anything else I'd like. I've got so many relievers and other pitchers I can call up that I, I just don't even want to think about it right now. Um... Yeah, if we pick up Brian Hunter, I'll probably call it good. But then if I get Brian Hunter, I can release Alex Ramirez. What can we get for an infielder? I mean, Jose Hernandez would look mighty fine. And Colorado purple, but see, Brian Hunter is perfect in some ways because of that great big thumper on him. But the fact he can't really play the field makes him less valuable to me. I also do want a defensive player that's at least competent. So let's start by looking for people with good shortstop defense. Even Stolka. He only plays short, though. I want a little bit more flexibility. Benji Gill can play just about everywhere, but isn't a very good hitter. What about Nick Foxworth? Nick Foxworth is low-key, like, the best ever utility guy. I A thousand times, yes. You're the perfect kind of player for the new Colorado Rockies. Because weather is going to depend on our overall um, bench. Like, I think we're going to rely on our bench more than some teams would. Is there a big time starting second baseman, perhaps? Like a truly special one? There is not. I mean, there's Pokey Reese, but he's no better than Graffin, you know? Not really. We got one Hall of Famer, which was Roger Clements. That's bonkers to me.
what are you guys on about? Like, what is it about these teams that you're like, nope, they're literal dog shit compared to Roger Clemens? Beautiful. All right, so we get Brian Jordan. I immediately return Alex Ramirez to his home team. And I immediately promote Mr. Nick Foxworth. Now I'm only two players down from a full roster. I've got my 13, so I need two pitchers. And one of them is going to be Fernando Cabrera. And the other one is probably somebody else. That's the kind of hard-hitting uh, position player selections that you'll hear here. Uh, damn, son. You're cranking up my, my budget. I don't know how to react to that. Is there a big name that's worth adding? Like, is for some reason Esteban the Wise? Is he still out there? No, he's not. Oh, he might be. Look, Marvin Bernard's price has come way down. I think he's recognizing how little actual... Um, how little actual... Um, leverage he had. As much as I wouldn't mind bringing him back, I, I just don't think he's a good fit. I'm probably overpaying David Bell. Um, almost certainly. But because of the era that we're in, what looks like an overpay now is going to look awfully cheap in just another few years. Um, Kurt Schilling, having better control is always nice. Well, sorry, I did want to at least sniff around to getting a better catcher. That is something I wanted to consider. Uh, I don't think there is one on deck, though. Like, a good quality catcher that you can be proud of. There is Mike Lieberthal, but he's basically Ramon Hernandez. There's Jason Veritek, but he's even worse. Um... Greg Zahn, Kansas City Royal of all time, Brent Main, briefly former Cleveland Guardian, Tim Laker. I thought I remembered him having a stint with the Rockies, too. There was genuinely a time when Brent Main wasn't terrible. It just wasn't a very long time. Some, uh, there are some names here. Jorge Fabregas. Wild. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just sim right up to spring training, and then we'll go from there. How much did Ramon Martinez get? He got $10 million for three years. Phillies, I think you're gonna regret that deal. I don't think that was a smart use of your team resources, which means I'm all for it. Uh, I want you to suffer. You jerks. Um, and I will invite Capuano to spring training too. Uh, do yo thing. I was about to ask, how is Brian Jordan ever starting? And I was, oh, it's when we need a designated hitter. And I'm, technically, I'm fine with that. Um, I do think that his somewhat underwhelming ratings are going to look a whole lot better in Colorado. Although, ironically, it'll only be when we're away. That's not as helpful.
<laughs> How can you have a dead arm, Glendon Rush? You've done literally nothing. Is this one of those things where you're like, oh, I've got a... I've got a major league contract now. I get lots of playing time, so fuck you, my arm hurts. I I see your game rush. Okay, Marvin Bernard got almost $7 million. Seattle, I think you're going to regret that contract. I genuinely do. For as amazing a player as he was for us, I feel reasonably good about that. Reasonably good. Uh, I feel less good about this, though. I think this makes Chris Capuano a starting pitcher, which is frankly terrifying, but... I mean, I'm going to check free agency super quick and see if there's anybody sitting around there that we could add in. Wow, Jeff Kent, huh? Wild. Um, I'll try not to say wild so much, but I, I probably can't promise that. Yeah, this is what we call a big oof kind of situation because there's literally nobody here better than Chris Capuano. Um, which is gross, but it's what we have to work with right now. Um, okay. I got 31 players, and I don't need 31 players. I could return Tony Garcia so I can keep Calvin Pickering. Or I can try to trade him for a starting pitcher. Let's try to trade him for a starting pitcher. I could have Pete Shork, or I could not take Pete Shork. Willie Banks doesn't have the stamina. Pat Henneken doesn't have the strikeouts. Butch Henry doesn't have the anything. Oh, you're going to be eating a sizable percentage of his salary if I'm going to do this for you. Um, how old? Are you? You're 34. Nope. You almost inadvertently weaseled me, but no, that's not happening. Or you have Justin Thompson. I don't need bonus Justin Thompson in my life. Boy, I don't know that I want a, a fast, uh, a hard-tossing junk baller in my rotation in Colorado. Like, it doesn't take much to earn... A place on this team but you're literally not offering me anything interesting I'm just gonna try to get a decent prospect at any position and just flip Pickering you know what Santiago Hornaday I like your name you're in all right 
Um... I don't want Juan Rivera, do I? No, his arm isn't good enough to be an everyday major leaguer, in my opinion. Uh, no one's going to trade for him, but that's fine. Um, let's flip Rafael Ramirez if we can. Maybe. Any position. I could acquire Brad Radke to be a starting pitcher. I keep going back to Frank Castillo, though. I don't know why. I mean, the thing with Brad Radke is if I do acquire it, no, he's actually had a pretty decent career. You know what? I will go for Radke. I think that's reasonable. Your mother is an overpaid veteran game. Like, he's at least as good as Capuano, right? Um, and I trust a veteran a bit more than Capuano to have a big role on the team. Okay, got to get rid of four more players. I'm at 13 position players. Let's talk about pitching staff. What do we have too many of? Probably relievers. <laughs> Goodbye, Baez. Goodbye, Feliciano. Super goodbye, Carlos Silva. And I think Brad Lich goes back to the minors. I think our friend here could could get a little work in and learn how to throw strikes a bit more frequently. Uh, if that happens, he'll be even better. All right, here's your opening day, Colorado Rockies. Your Rockies, if you will. Uh, you'd rather start Capuano over Radke. I mean, I'm willing to give him a shot. Um, I don't mind that at all. We will use Fernando Cabrera as the closer. I think he's a perfect choice in this ballpark. Uh, lineups? No, 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 no. This does not work for me. All right, our best overall non-power hitter is Austin Kearns. And Austin Kearns has a decent bit of power, so it's not like he's a huge issue. Austin Kearns has to bat either second or third. And I think he bats second. Then Raul Mondesi bats cleanup. Derek Lee bats third. And Andrew Jones bats fifth. Carlos Guillen has pretty consistently gotten on base. I'm willing to let him be our leadoff guy. And then we go Ramon Hernandez hitting 6th, David Bell hitting 7th, and Tony Graffanino hitting 8th. Fill in the depth chart, and Bob's your uncle. Uh, 
I see no downside to anything here. Good. I'm just going to let you do what you want, Bench Coach. I want you to feel that your opinion is valued. I am going to quickly go under staffing needs and make sure that we have the best teachers at the best positions. Um... Perfect. We have reasonably content coaching. Like, everyone gets along well enough. Even if nobody gets along mega well. And I think that is enough, my friends, to move onward. And yeah, we'll try Capuano. With the understanding that Capuano's time could be very brief when, um, when, Carlos, when uh, Chris Carpenter gets back. Call him the carp. I have never met Chris Carpenter, nor would I ever call him the carp, but it'd be funny to do it. Like, hey, uh, carpy. How's the carpin'? And then he just instantly stabs you in the throat, and you realize that you had it coming the whole time. Um, I'm not even mad. Um, let's see here. This is just a weird position for, like, all these plays. Except for Chad Tracy, who, if I remember correctly, did, in fact, play for the Diamondbacks. Uh, he did. So, Chad Tracy ended up where he was. But, I mean, Maurer on the Red Sox instead of the Twins. Wright on the Reds instead of the Mets. Greinke with the Royals instead of the Mets. Uh, with the Mets instead of the Royals, sorry. Uh, Gritty Sizemore got drafted by the Expos, um, and they got traded to Cleveland. Ryan Howard was on the Philadelphia Phillies. Scott Casimir was drafted by the A's, I think. Because I think it was one of the things from Moneyball. Oh, no, they got him later in his career. Uh, he was actually drafted by Tampa. I didn't remember that. Matt Holliday, I always remember as a St. Louis Cardinal, but I don't remember if they drafted him or not. No, he got drafted by the Rockies, I, ironically enough. I didn't remember that. Damn good ball player. Not Hall of Fame worthy in any stretch of imagination, but damn fine. I think you're lying here. I, I don't think Matt Holiday started 14 games for the Rockies and yet somehow had 700 at-bats. I, I don't believe you, game. I think you're drunk. Jason Worth was primarily a Philadelphia Philly, but I don't think they picked him. No, he started with Toronto. There we go. Euclid, instead of the Greek got a walk, not playing for the Red Sox. Let's go ahead and advance time up. I do. Oh yeah, Fernando Cabrera. Of all the Cabreras, I know you're the Fernandoist. I do, huh? Yeah, I don't care. You would give me Isaiah Greasy for Pedro Feliciano. I don't hate the move. I think he's at least an intriguing infielder. I feel like I could probably do better, though. So let's actually go ahead and flip um, Feliciano, because I don't actually want him. And see if there is, like, a, a, a mid-tier prospect that might be a better fit really I mean shit maybe this guy's as good as I can do that doesn't feel right though I, I feel like there's got to be somebody who give me something more interesting than that That is what I feel. 
3,000 hits for Rafael Palmero. Very nice. Damn, son. Ramon Hernandez gets six hits. 23 to 3. Oh, my word. Truly bonkers. The bonkeriest. Again, not going to look at stats too early in the season. Uh, six months, two months for Grappinino actually is somewhat inconvenient. Because I don't want Foxworth playing every day, I don't think. It actually wouldn't be the worst choice. I wonder if I can still get that one guy um, from the Jerk Weasels. I know it's not the name of their team. Oh, now you want a better offer. I see how you are. I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, they quickly recognize, wait a minute, these guys aren't that solid anymore. Um, I could get Mark Rudd's Atlantic. I won't, but I could. Do you have anybody here that's at least reasonably interesting and could play several useful positions? I could go Willie Green. I hear you never go will full Willie Green, but maybe you do in this case. Now, I think Juan Castro makes more sense. He's an accomplished hitter with enough glove at two of the three positions that I'd feel much better about him. Uh, so I'm going to offer you a deal, your very own. And I'm going to instantly slide in Foxworth to second base in all the times. You're all going to be like, remember when I had... Um, Tony Grappin, you know, and you're going to be like, I don't either. Because Nick fucking Foxworth just stepped up and hit 5,000 homers. No, I'm not saying he will definitely hit 5,000 homers, but I'm definitely saying he'll hit 5,000 homers. Um, Cameron Crew. Oh, I like this a lot. Done. I don't want to give up Velario, but I don't mind it. And I think I just want having I want to have another quality dude. Oh, Cameron Crew also needs uh, a roster spot. I can give him the roster spot for now. And then we can make appropriate adjustments down the line. Uh, absolutely not. I do not want Cameron Crew playing second base every day. That's silly. In fact, copy the steps chart you miscreant and then paste it. There we go. And here I don't care what you do. Um, but I like Foxworth a little bit better because he's a really solid all-around second baseman with enough pop that I think Coors will really bail him out. That is my firm belief. I'm not trading that low on... I'm not selling that low on Brad Lidge. I think Lich has a lot to offer us in the future. I just need him to get some shit together. I understand, Brian. But here's my counter offer. Stick a fucking potato in it. Just the whole potato. Don't pick it. Just shove an entire raw potato into your mouth. Uh, that is what I would like you to do. 
You can't have salt, can't have butter, no pepper, just eat a potato. And that'll learn you, learn you good. Yeah, apart from Nick Foxworth, the offense is, is clicking on, I dare say, most of the, most of the cylinders. Uh, Kurt Schilling is mediocre. Chris Capuano is actively terrible. Uh, what is Schilling's deal? Uh, he's just getting hit this season. He wasn't getting hit last season, but he's actually still a pretty positive contributor. Um, how can we be first in zone writing, but dead last in defensive efficiency? What's the deal? What deal could there possibly be? I'm beginning to think there's a glitch in the way the game portrays defensive efficiency. Because, like, we have a really damn good defense, and the game is like, no, it's dead last in efficiency. I don't know what's happening there, uh, but it doesn't make any sense to me, so I, I choose to ignore it. I choose to ignore it. Um, I mean, I could just throw Radke into the rotation. And bench Capuano. I mean, Capuano does have really good strikeout numbers. It's his home run numbers that are terrible. Maybe he'll figure it out, but also it's equally probable that he won't. I'm going to give you one more month, my dude, and if you don't figure out your shit, your time in Colorado may be quite short. I am not giving up. Uh, oh, would you like a new deal? How much money do you want? Done. Uh, flat peanuts is is fine with me because I can cut you if you suck. Uh, hey, Brian Jordan. I want you to listen carefully. Look at your stats sheet and shut the fuck up. Okay? I, I need you to stop. We get Nick Foxworth for another year. Like, bare minimum, he's going to be a really solid utility guy. Uh, we would look pretty stupid, wouldn't we? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Pat Rap ain't no crap. Um, I just thought of that. I want you to know. I just came up with that. Okay. Let's talk pitching staff. Chris Capuano is not a major league starter for the Colorado Rockies. He's given up two homers every nine innings, and that's just not sustainable. Like, I get it. We're going to give up a lot of home runs. That's kind of our thing here understood but you could still be so much better so you get benched in favor of radke wait mike gonzalez was legitimately like an excellent pitcher last year and your solution is let's make him only a lefty killer eh -eh. you're a middle reliever that features against lefties but you are much more well-rounded than that justin doucherer on the other hand is going to be avoiding high leverage for a bit until he can figure out his job and how to suck less at it is there an interesting starting pitcher on the market probably not probably not Man, David Bell's contract really kind of hurts. Why did I do it? I mean, clearly I was 
mentally deranged at the time. I just won the World Series last year, so you can fuck right off too, owner. I have no time for your shit. Is there an elite starting pitcher, or at least an average one, that I could bring in? Absolutely not. It's all a bunch of crap. What about a second baseman? Because Nick Foxworth, it ain't working out. I'm going to get Graffinino back in one week. I guess I'm not going to acquire somebody just for a that brief a time. Um, okay. All right. No, man. Uh, Houston Jimenez is perfectly fine. Um, I know we could probably get better chemistry if we change things up a little bit. I want to get somebody who's personable. I don't have anybody right now that really. Uh, sure thing, Jim Spencer. Welcome aboard. Um, John Shelby is fine. I think I'd like to try to get at least one personable coach at either position. And the benefit is that Houston, oh you're both quite you're both quite young. I kind of feel like I want to get one really elite coach to start like working up to replace Houston Jimenez, or Jimenez could move over to first base, or whatever. I think I want at least one new coach. And I like Jimenez slightly better, because he can also help us teach hitting. Which makes him a bit more versatile as a bench coach than Selby. So we're going to give him a new deal. Uh, Joe Hesketh is still a reasonably good pitching coach. So let's just lock all these boys up. Hey, Joe, if you don't want to be my pitching coach anymore, I can easily find someone else. If you think you're going to hold me over a barrel. I could give him a two-year deal. I don't want to, though. Uh, I want to get better, so that's what I'm going to do instead. Good talk. Um, is there any position I could acquire and feel better about our team's chances? I mean, hell, I could just send frickin' Capuano back to the minors and call up Brad Lidge and probably end up a better team. I mean, Capuano's value, though, is that he could be an emergency starting pitcher, so I think we go with that, uh, at least until um, Carpenter is healthy. Angel Santos. Santos Escobar. Um, I actually really like him. I wish his contact was better, but I think this might be able to play. And I don't need Mike Wood. And I don't like Juan Rivera. So I think a guy like Santos actually does make some sense. Let's go ahead and grab him. Let's complete this Traderino. Let's make it happen, Cap'n. Good. I like how the entire season they just haven't had a hitting coach. And they're just like, yeah, whatever. All right, we get Graffinino back, which is excellent news. I'm not going to get rid of Foxworth. Um, instead, I will send down Mr. Cameron Crew. And we're just going to instantly slot Graffinino back into second. Like, I'm not even going to hesitate for a split second. Uh, I still think Foxworth has value. 
But I don't think he should have... I don't think he needs to be starting anymore. And I think having Graffinino makes us a better team. Uh, if you would kindly regenerate my depth chart, thank you very much. And here also, again, a thank you. And a bit of this. Like, I don't want to make it seem like I don't like Foxworth. I just... Like, he's valuable to me. Uh, he's perfectly cromulent in a lot of ways, but he's definitely not a starting second baseman. Um, not unless he goes bonkers and just starts hitting home runs every other at bat. Which I don't think is highly... I don't think is very likely. I, I don't think that's going to happen. All right. I don't know why I used to call him Rad Bradkey. Which doesn't make any sense. He's not even particularly rad, but I guess that's the route I went. Um, I like how Izquierdo is a righty. Where from, if my Spanish is correct, Izquierdo actually means left. I don't remember, though. I don't remember. Um... No Colorado Pritchers, but Derek Lee made it. Mondesi and Jones both made it. And that's it. I get three All-Stars. Lee, Mondesi, and Jones. What's wrong with uh, Austin Kearns this season? He's merely very good instead of a megastar. That's kind of disappointing. My man Carlos Guillen is also not getting on base as much as he used to. That's kind of a downer. Any Colorado prospects? Roberto Novoa, Denny Bautista. Bautista. No, I'm not saying I won't trade Brian Jordan. What could I get from Mr. Jordan? Not today, Bob Smith, no. Um... Ricky Lede. You know what? I like a guy like a Jose Guillen. I think he makes a ton of sense. I know he's not as athletic as Brian Jordan. He doesn't play center field like Brian Jordan does. I could get Ichiro. No, I truly think the best choice here is, um, is Jose Guillen. I think that's hilarious. They're like, oh, we're losing our locker room leader. Yay, we're getting a new locker room leader. Um, I don't know that I want to... Oh, gosh, my, my money's about to dry way the fuck out. Um, let's go ahead and generate new depth charts here. I mean, I don't know that I love the idea of Austin Kearns playing center if Andrew Jones needs a break, but I guess I don't have a choice. I now don't have a DH at all. Oh, that's because it would probably be Guillen. There we go. That makes sense. That makes sense. The nuts fizzle. They, they'll do that every now and again. Now, it is not lost to me, by the way. I haven't forgotten that Jose Guillen will probably abandon us. 
um, come playoff time. And that's fine. Um, I've got other avenues should that be required. I wouldn't sell yourself short, Stain, but I do think that Joe DiMaggio was a little bit more well-rounded, but I think Stan Musial was the better hitter. Saying as a guy who wasn't even born when either one of them uh, retired, so... I'm going purely based on these statistical records, so you can consider as you like. Um, so let's go ahead and get some emergency starting work in for Chris Carpenter. But I also want to call up Brad Lidge and get Mr. Lidge here to throw some some innings every now and again just lengthen up this rotation and pitching staff um kurt Schilling's probably gone especially because money is so tight right now i don't think keeping him around is very sensible um i might let ramon hernandez walk like, as excellent he's been, as he's been offensively, as a catcher, he's decidedly meh. And, but I mean, I guess the real question is, can we do better? And I don't know the answer to that. Probably not. Um, it's probably not going to be easy to find a better catcher without getting a good draft pick. Uh, speaking of Kurt Schilling being out, um, hey, Carpenter, get to throwing, mate. Yeah, Hesketh actually sucked. That was the issue there. I just scored 27 runs in a game. I love playing as the Rockies. This is truly absurd about it. It's a damn good thing that I got Chris Young, because without him, we would have no pitching staff. Isn't Chris Young black? Maybe not. I genuinely don't remember. Um, it's been too long since I've seen a picture of him. Although I know he's in a player development role for the Texas Rangers, so it's not like he's not in the game anymore. Um, cool. Uh, let's proceed. Shall we? Um, I guess we can have Kurt Schilling back. We can have a little Kurt Schilling as a treat. Um, you can do emergency starter. I'll probably give Kurt Schilling a decent role come playoff time. Um, just because he was such a big, well, the other D-Bell. Um, no, because he had a, a fairly big role in the playoffs. And really, game? Really? A fucking concussion for Derek Lee is what you think is appropriate. I detest you, game. I am full of anger and rage. And super rage. Like, I don't even have a bat that I trust to replace him. Like, not even a little bit. And anybody I acquire this late in the season is not going to be um, very available.
hey, Archie Chanfroco, you might get a real chance, but I want to see who else we have that's good offensively. I mean, Jeffrey Hammonds is probably the best overall hitter, but Jeffrey Hammonds doesn't play for his base. Um... <laughs> Could grab Jeff Kent and shuffle him over to first. I've heard of stupider ideas. We could get the Greg Jeffries. Um, I, I don't know that I want the Greg Jeffries, but Edgardo Alfonso, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Like, he's an okay contact guy. I'd like someone with a bit more pop because he's replacing Derek Lee, after all. But maybe a guy like him is actually the best possible choice. He's a good defender. No, if I'm going to do that, I want someone more like a Greg Jeffries because they can also draw walks. Or Todd Walker. Ooh, Todd Walker. Yeah, let's get Todd Walker. I think he's a good choice. Uh, please sign quickly is is my 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 request of you. And this is gonna seem weird as shit, but I don't really have a choice for what I do with him. I'm just gonna drop him right into hitting third for right now. Um, and you're gonna play first. First, like I know I could just play Jose Guillen more frequently. I get that, but I I don't know what I'm gonna do. Honest, to be perfectly blunt, um, losing Derek Lee is something I had not planned for at all. Um, it's gonna be kind of rough. Um, an okay year for baseball players. Few of them exceptional, other than maybe Robinson Cano before he pissed away his career. And I'm Wayne Wright. Honestly, he's another one who's I've always really liked watching. Uh, I think he's always been a, a really solid player. We're losing Marty Martinez. Okay. Are you any good? Uh, Josiah Derry, you're terrible. Jim Spencer is less terrible, but still not good. I think we just need to upgrade and, and bring in some new, some new blood. Which is like two games left in the season. How have I not clinched a division yet? Oh, because we're just now starting October. Got it. And we lost Nick or Dick Nold. Almost called him Nick Dold. I guess not his name. Uh, Rudy May, I like the cut of your jib. I think I can promote you to being a AAA manager, perhaps. Ooh, but Ed Armbrister is even better. Yeah, screw you, Rudy May. It's all about Ed Armbrister now. This is Armbrister country. This is Armbrister country. Um... Cool. Player development. Young players get worse. Old players get worse. Utter shock. I mean, I was I could have called up the Casey Blake. Um, I I guess another National League West crown. We only won eighty nine games this season, though. I mean, that doesn't matter. Making the playoffs is what matters, but I am deeply concerned about our ability to be good at playing baseball with uh, with megastar Todd Walker being our only choice at first base. Um, yeah, I've got to do it. Uh, where is Todd Walker? Where did you go? Oh, um... Let's go to active roster and let's add Todd Walker. Can I not 
Oh, you had to be in my roster before. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Is there anyone I can activate to play first base? Do I have any players even marginally qualified to play first base? Like, even a little bit. I also lose Jose Guillen, uh, which I'm not a fan of. But I mean, look, I, it's not like I didn't know it was going to happen. Um, so we might just have to kind of grin and bear it and just let the bench coach do whatever he wants. Because uh, I, I genuinely don't have a first baseman unless Lugo plays first. Which I guess he's not terrible at. Um, so go ahead and do this, please. And... Uh, yeah. Sometimes, guys, your your team really gets kind of boned. Um, I am going to go for a four-man rotation, but I'm going to give Kurt Schilling the fourth spot. Uh, with Brad Radke as the other guy. And I guess you can do a bit of no relief, long relief. We're going to have an overstacked um, pitching staff. And that's fine. That is completely and utterly fine. Did you know I didn't even remember we had Jason Isringhausen, like, up until this moment? I did not remember that we had him. I guess that doesn't really say much for his value to the, to the Rockies, does it? I mean, Glendon Rush uh, had himself a game. Uh, Bartolo Colon, not so much. It's Chris v. Chris. And neither Chris won. Uh, we were Chrisless. Uh, Kurt Schilling got torn apart. Uh, guys, I don't... I think I'm just going to send the game whatever happens, happens. If we get to the NLCS, then I'll, I'll play the games if needed. Uh, and we didn't, and that's fine. Uh, we only won 89 games. We were severely flawed by the time the playoffs hit because we lost Derek Lee. Um, yeah, I'm not... I know it's a disappointment because we just won the World Series last season. However, I don't think it's unrealistic based on what we actually accomplished this season. Uh, the Memphis Tasmanian Devils would like you to be a hitting coach. I mean, it's a phenomenal name. I don't want to keep you from that, but I do like you as a coach, and I would like you to stay. Uh, I will give you another extension. Yeah, I'm, I'm not upset. Uh, I'm not even annoyed. I think that's an appropriate finish for... And especially in the absence of the best player on our team. Um... When that happens and you don't have a good plan, you're going to struggle. And I'm not that bothered by it. Did, did more people retire? Guys, don't retire. Uh, Kurt Schilling, get fucked. I need the money. We got to the playoffs. Won a world championship. And I get a one-year deal. Wow. You're a harsh dude. I I don't appreciate that. I won you a fucking World Series. I should have at least a three-year contract. I don't think that's an unfair demand. Um, wow. That's... What a ginormous dick move is all I can say. Um, I'm picking 24th in the draft. It's better than 30th. I mean, the gross Yankees won the World Series, but I guess that's fine. Uh, so, let's talk about what went well this season and what maybe didn't go so well. Raul Mondesi was truly exceptional. Uh, he took all his normal talents and just amped them up a little bit farther. 
And I have nothing further to add. Raul Mondesi was truly exceptional. Andrew Jones just keeps doing it. And I love the fact that a lot of his value is also driven by his elite defense and base running. It makes him a little bit more age-proof. Now remember, real-life Andrew Jones hit a brick wall at the age of 30. Um, but I'm fine with that. Like, right now, if he retired, he'd have some chance of getting into the Hall of Fame. I think he's got more to play for us. Austin Kearns was as good as he was last se season. But how much can you really complain when this is what he produces for you? The answer is very little. I have really nothing to complain about with Mr. Austin Kearns. He had a fine, fine season, good player, great job, no further comment. Carlos Guillen had a sneaky good season. Maybe not as good as 2003, but sneaky good. And I'm pretty happy with his performance. Like, let's be real. What fueled 2003? A crazy number of triples. Triples are among the most difficult things to project from year to year. It just doesn't happen. Uh, also had 23 homers last year, and he cut that in half. But everything else about him was still there, and he did what I wanted him to do, which is get on base and score runs. So Then we kind of hit a wall. We kind of hit a wall. Um, let's not waste a moment, though, to praise Derek Lee, who earned his first year of his contract by playing ex exceptionally well. The only reason he didn't get another six and a half to seven wins is because of his injury. Uh, so he did what he needed to do. I'm happy. Great job. Come back next year. Be phenomenal. But our second division players weren't as good as they should have been. Ramon Hernandez was deeply disappointing. Yeah, the man has pop. No disputing that. But he's playing in Colorado. League average is basically a slap in the face, especially from someone who isn't an elite defensive catcher. He just isn't. Uh, he's costing us nearly a full win with his terrible framing. And he barely throws people out. I think we need a new catcher, and we need one in the very near future. I can't get rid of him yet, but I will soon. Tony Graffinino also had a really disappointing year. I think second base needs to be addressed. And Carlos Lugo, he's a one-trick pony. He'll either hit a bunch of homers or he won't, and if he doesn't, he's not very good. Our bench underperformed. Um, not counting Todd Walker, who only had like 40 at bat. So I think depth on the bench needs to be a priority again. Let's talk pitching. Bartolo Colon had a really good year. And I think it's easy to lose that in the shuffle, but he was a very good pit starting pitcher. Glendon Rush really impressed me. Um, this is a guy that we brought in a little bit on faith, and he delivered. Uh, very pleased with that. Chris Young, as a rookie, I will take a higher than normal ERA in Coors Field. I will absolutely accept it, as long as the peripherals are there, and they are. Excellent. Rookie Fernando Cabrera comes in and is like the most dominant closer in closer history. I love it. Really good secondary pitchers. Really put stuff together. We got good seasons out of Brad Radke and Kurt Schilling. A phenomenal season out of Juan Cruz. Um, another great season out of Kevin Gregg. We even got production out of Chris Capuano. I know he wasn't an impressive starting pitcher, but we got some decent innings out of him, and I'm happy about that. All this is to say the pitching staff was probably better than it had any right to be. And if our lineup was anywhere near as good as the season last year, I think it would have had a truly exceptional season. Not another World Series title. I think that was a bridge too far. 
Um, that's a bridge too far until we can get another couple of pieces. So what do we need to improve on? Catcher and second base. I think are the two biggest issues. And even catcher, I'll sort of live with. Graffinino, I think, needs needs to be done, though. And if we can find an improvement there, I think we will. Juan Cruz absolutely gets a raise. I, I don't mind that at all. Had an excellent year. Love it. Austin Currens wants a raise. You came off of three consecutive excellent seasons. No doubt, easy choice. Kareem Atkinson, I probably need a new backup catcher. If my starter isn't a great defender, I need my backup to be, so I think I'm going to non-tender you. And I... I'm going to leave the Ramon Hernandez decision for next episode. Because... $7 million is a lot to make to pay for a catcher whose value is entirely offensive, playing in one of the best offensive parks in the country. I think I'm getting hosed on Ramon Hernandez. So we might try to trade him or do something in addition to him rather than just sign him outright. We're going to lose Chris Carpenter. Um, I'm not going to re-sign him. I don't see the value in that. Um, Jose Guillen had a pretty okay year off the bench. Is that worth a million dollars a year for three years? I think it might be. I think I'm okay with this deal. Um, what do I bring back her chilling for? Like, even $850,000 seems like a ripoff. Um... I think we just look to upgrade the rotation again. And then Todd Walker does whatever Todd Walker does. Yeah, here's the issue. His movement wasn't great to begin with, but it's getting worse. He's losing velocity. I don't think I can bring him back, but I will consider it for the right offer. I love to give Josh Robinson a minor league extension. He really, these guys really lit it up. They lit it up. Oh, dear God. Juan Gutierrez, minus six war. How bad were you? Pretty bad. Let's just say. Um, But yeah, I don't consider this a disappointing season. I consider it maybe a little bit of a setback. But I don't think it's an irretrievable one. And I do think we've got some options money-wise, money, money wise to try to take us up another level next season. And we happen to have a fairly good draft pick. Uh, not for Unieski Betancourt, that's for damn sure. I'd probably pick, like, a C.J. Wilson or a Rich Hill. If we look at the draft pool... Like, this isn't the deepest draft in human history, but I think it's deep enough. I would pee my pants if I got Justin Verlander. That ain't gonna happen. I think, say, an Urban Santana, um, a Sean Markin, a Scott Olson, a CJ Wilson, these are all much more realistic. Um, Robinson Cano, again. Yo, dog, I hear you like second baseman. Ain't gonna fucking happen. There's no way Robinson Cano falls out of the top 10, in my opinion. I don't think he even falls out of the top 5. Um, there are some players here that would make me do figurative jumping jacks if they were... And backflips if they fell to 24. I just don't see it happening. Uh, however, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope you are enjoying the series. We have a, a full episode for the first time in a while, which makes me really happy. Hopefully it makes you happy, too. Um, and until next time, this has been Guardian. Thank you very much for watching, and I bid you good day.